Before using any machine in the shop, you should read and understand the owner's manuals. This is our table saw that we have set up with the dado blade. We often refer to this as our dado saw, even though it is a table saw with the dado blade. The dado blade is an accessory that can fit into the table saw. But this table saw, everything that we talked about during our regular table saw demonstration applies to using the dado blade as well. But we're going to examine and look a little closer at using the dado blade on the table saw. You'll notice a few different things about this machine that our standard table saw is that our guard is going to float over the workpiece so that our workpiece can run underneath that guard and get cut. The other table saws have a guard that has a splitter attached to them and that splitter cannot be used in this application because we're not cutting all the way through the workpiece. So as we take a look at the dado blade, this is what's called a stacked dado blade. And this means that the blades, there are several blades stacked next to each other to get the desired width of the cut you want. The two outside cutters have many teeth on them as you rotate the blade. The inside cutters are just little chippers and so they don't have as many teeth because they don't need to give as nice of a cut. It's the outside edges of the dado and rabbit that need to be nice. So as you put a dado blade on, a stacked dado blade, you wanna make sure the teeth are staggered in between each other so that the carbide pads of one tooth, like right here, does not hit the tooth of the other one because as you tighten up this blade, the carbide could get crushed if you have the blades right next to each other. So we can see, if we turn to the side here, we can see that those two are offset from each other. This tooth is just behind that tooth on the saw blade. If we take a look at this fence, this fence has a scrap board attached to the side, a sacrificial piece, so that it can be cut into and not ruin the good fence or the steel part of the fence. This allows us to bring the fence really close to the blade and allow us to get rabbit cuts right on the edge of our board without leaving any material behind. What this also allows us to do is bring the fence over top of the blade and we could actually cut rabbits that are smaller than the blade is set for. So we can actually push that over, we could cut like a quarter inch rabbit with a three quarter inch setting on the blade. As we take a look at our fence, we need to be uh, mindful that this cursor here, the red line that indicates what we're set to, is not correct for the blade. Our blade, remember, is about three quarters of an inch wide right now, and so this is not going to be accurate for our needs. We leave this cursor here, though, so that if you need to make some fine adjustments after you get it set, maybe your dado's a sixteenth of an inch off, you could use this cursor to move a sixteenth either way for your settings. So it's not accurate, but it will be used to help us fine tune our setting once we take our rough measurement. When we're cutting dados, remember a dado or a groove is in the middle of the board. When we're cutting a dado, that's going to leave some material between the fence and the blade as we're cutting. This is going to create a hazard for us that we have to be very careful as we're cutting. As we're pushing this through, we need to make sure our board stays nice and tight against the fence because if we're moving and this board comes away from the fence, it's going to bind or pinch the blade as the pressure between the fence and the blade increases, it's going to want to shoot it back at us. So we need to make sure it stays nice and tight because there is material between the fence and the blade. When we're taking a look at our rabbits, remember rabbits are cut on the edges of the board and a rabbit is a little bit more safe to cut because there is no material between the fence and the blade. So there's nothing, if we accidentally come away from the fence, we can't pinch or bind the blade because there's no material between the fence or the blade. So a rabbit is a safer cut to make than the dado cut. Because our fence is not accurate with that cursor, 
because of the blade width and the sacrificial fence here, we're going to take and set the fence with our tape measure. And we're going to do that by taking our tape measure against the fence up to the blade. Now before we do that, because this is metal and we don't want to set off the saw stop, we are, and our hand would be closer than four inches away, we want to shut the main power off to the motor. That can be done a couple ways. The first way is down here at the control panel, there is a little yellow switch that will turn the power off. You can see the power is off when the lights on the machine are done. Also over on the side of the machine, down on the floor here is a lockout tag out main power switch. You just quarter turn that to turn the power off to the machine. And we could also disconnect the power from the power source by unplugging the saw so that it has no power to it. So once we've disconnected the power, we take our tape measure, put that against the fence, and typically we're looking at the very first tooth there. So if our dado needed to be an inch and a half from the edge of the board, we would use that very first tooth on our tape measure to get that lined up to an inch and a half. And after you clamp the fence down with the red handle back here, you want to clamp it and then verify your measurement again because sometimes that fence moves. And if we zoom in here and take a look, that fence to that first tooth is an inch and a half away. So when we're setting the blade height, we can make a mark on our board with our pencil and we can use that next to the blade and raise or lower the blade until that first tooth is the same height as our pencil mark. And then once you've got that to the right height, you should be set to go. The other way you can set the blade height is by using your tape measure. You wanna have the power turned off to the machine, but you could use your tape measure right alongside the blade on the throat plate and then see how high it is sitting according to your tape measure. Either of those methods would work for getting the blade set to the correct height. Once we have the blade height and the fence set, we need to get the guard in place and that just slides over out of the housing there, slides down above the workpiece and you want the guard to be about centered in the blade. Then you can loosen the handle here and lower the guard housing down. You wanna make sure you need, leave yourself plenty of clearance so that your board doesn't get stuck. And we're gonna say that should be about one eighth to one quarter of an inch above the workpiece. Just enough that my workpiece can work underneath there without binding against it. As we're pushing this wood through the saw, we're going to have this push block here and pushing down tight to the table. As I am doing that, I'm also pushing forward to feed the saw into the blade, or to feed the wood into the blade. And so as I'm moving forward, I need to keep this pressure down along the face of the board. My left hand really isn't pushing forward because if this left hand puts too much pressure on, I'm gonna pull it away from the fence. Our push block needs to be as close to the fence as possible. That way we have less leverage against the edge of the board and so it'll stay tighter for us. So as we're feeding it through, my left hand is pretty much there. So when I'm ready to stop, I can hold on to it and move my push block back. And then I can feed it through all the way to the end. Make sure when you get to the end that you are pushing your workpiece all the way past the saw blade before you bring it around and bring it back. If we're gonna change the dado blade, because oftentimes we need different sized dados for different types of material, we go into this little finger groove here and pull out up on that lever here. The throat plate comes out and we can see into the saw. This is a saw stop brand of equipment. So we do have our brake for emergencies down below the blade there. If we need to take off different blades for different sizes, we need to loosen the arbor nut and have another wrench on this side to hold the arbor in place so we can take this apart. All right, we're here looking down into the top of the saw and we're gonna change the blade to a different size. 
So I'm going to take my two wrenches and I'm going to take the open end wrench and it's going to go to the side where the motor is over here and I'm going to slide it down and I'm going to turn the blade or arbor so that I can get the notch to fit into that open end and then it should be on the blade. Now I'm going to take the closed end or box end and I'm going to get it right here on the nut and line those two up and loosen the nut. And as that loosens, I should just need the wrench for a minute. Then I can get in here by hand. There's a little door here that will open up for ease of access. And then I'm gonna take the nut and loosen it by hand. Be sure not to drop it down in the, uh, the saw. It's either gonna go down in the bottom of the machine or into the dust port. And uh, it's going to be difficult to find with all the sawdust that's in the bottom of the machine. So make sure you don't drop it pull it out. We're going to take these blades off now. And when we do that, we want to set the blades down on a piece of wood or something that is not metal so that uh, the carbide teeth do not touch the surface of the steel tabletop. So for today, I'm going to put them on this piece of wood here and stack them up. So I'm going to pull one off very gently. And I'm gonna set them down so that the teeth are not touching the table. And these chippers here, these chippers are uh, less teeth on them than the outside blades. The outside blades have a lot more teeth because they're giving a nice clean cut. I'm gonna stack those on the table here or on my piece of wood. And as I stack them, I'm gonna make sure these teeth are not touching the next piece. So I'm gonna just kind of stagger them. So I've got one tooth here. I'm gonna put the other tooth like that and so forth until I get through all the blades, just offsetting them so that the teeth are not touching. So now we have all of our chippers off we're going to set up for a quarter inch so we're just going to put this outside blade back on i'm going to slide it down in there and slide it on the arbor now i need to be careful when i'm lining up these uh, blades i don't want the teeth to be right next to each other what i want is for them to be staggered if i put them right next to each other the carbide tooth that's on the tip of the blade is wider than the body of the blade. So as these two try to push tight and get that body nice and tight, it's going to crush or crack the carbide teeth. So we need to stagger them. And when we stagger them, we have this opening here before the tooth and then an opening. We're just gonna offset them so that one tooth is in front of the other. So here's that offset where we have one tooth in front of the other, and we can see there that they're sitting in between that opening. So the carbide tooth is not touching the next carbide tooth over. So this allows the carbide tooth to not be putting pressure on the body of the blade or on the next tooth. So once we have the teeth lined up, we can take our nut and put it back on the arbor and we're gonna make sure it goes on nice and smooth. If it's not going on nice and easy, we're going to be probably cross threading the arbor. So I'm gonna take the nut and get down in here and just very lightly thread that on. It should go on very, very easy, no force. I don't have to use the wrench to get it on until we get right up to the body of the blade. So I'm gonna get that finger tight make sure those teeth are all still in place and then we're going to snug up the bit or the blade so i'm going to put the wrench back on and snug it up now what might happen when you snug that up is those teeth might slide a little bit but we know that the pads aren't touching each other so what happens is when you tighten that up the outside blades cause it to kind of to spin and so this tooth is slid back right in front of this other tooth and that's fine as long as they're not uh, crushing on the carbide there. 
And now we can get the wrenches out of there. We're done with the wrenches. And before we close this up, there's a little door down here. We need to pull that door shut to help with dust management. And if we put, if we put the throat plate that was originally in here back in, you'll notice that the blade's a lot smaller than the previous one. So we have room for uh, pieces of wood and our material to get stuck in here. So it would be best if you uh, have available a throat plate that has the zero clearance for this particular blade size that you have. Now you may have a blade that is uh, a little bit of a gap around there, but this is quite a bit. So we're gonna see if we can change this out with one that is a little bit more suited for what we need. So I'm gonna pull this back out and we'll insert a uh, one that's set up for a quarter inch blade. And I'm gonna slide this in. The tip has to go in first. And as the tip goes in, then we can make sure it's flush all the way around. Lastly, locking this metal ring that's around here, push that down. You can see this zero clearance on this one's a lot better. So we're not gonna have any material get stuck down into the throat of the machine because of that uh, uh, very minimal space around there. If you find yourself needing a dado in the middle of your board, you're going to have material on both sides of the blade where you could hold on to the workpiece. We are going to want our push block to be over on the side between the fence and the blade. This is going to allow us to keep pressure down and keep it tight to the fence easier. The further we are away from the fence with our push block, the more chance we have to move it away from the fence because any movement on the far side of the board is going to be multiplied or exaggerated over here along the fence. So any slight movement here, we're gonna see it on the fence. Any little slight movement over here, we're not gonna notice quite as much because it's gonna stay tight against the fence. Less leverage on the board, the closer to the fence that we can be with the push stick or push block. When we are using the dado blade, we want to have the fence typically as close to the blade as possible. To give you an example here, if we're cutting a rabbit on the edge of our board, we would not want to set it up like this and cut our rabbit over here when the fence is so far away. When we're cutting, it's going to have a possibility or a greater chance to come away from the fence on us because of the amount of leverage because of the length of the board there. We would want to slide the fence over as close as possible and then turn our board around because that was the side that we needed for our rabbit and then run it through. Same with your dados, as you're cutting dados, we generally, with a dado, do not want to be greater than half the distance of the board away. So if we're cutting a dado in dead center, that's as far away from the fence as we would want to be. We would not want to move it way out here and run a dado out here with the fence so far away. Again, just like the rabbit, we'd want to move the fence closer, turn the board around so that we, our fence is as close to the blade as possible. On a wider, narrower stock, we would want to use the miter gauge on the table saw here because what's going to happen if we try to run this piece through without any uh, support from the miter gauge, we have very little surface area along the fence and this uh, board could move away and pinch or bind the blade which is going to cause it to kick back. So we would use the miter gauge to ensure that as we're running it through it's not moving. Now just like with the regular table saw setup, we do not want to use the fence and the, or the fence and the miter gauge at the same time. So we would use some kind of stop block and clamp that to the, the fence here so that as we use that for a stop to get the right size, we can then uh, leave that when we make our cut and we have no material that can bind between the fence and the blade because that stop block has given us that distance. We have no drag along the fence because we've left that stop block. Let's turn the machine on and make a cut.
Anytime you are checking your work or your cut, you need to turn the machine off. Don't leave it running while you're looking or um, checking out your work because we don't want anything to accidentally happen, someone to slide into the blade or a piece of wood slip and go into the blade. So make sure the machine is turned off anytime you're examining your workpiece. So I like to typically run my workpiece twice. The first time going through the machine is removing the bulk of the material. And then the second pass is gonna come in and give me a nice clean cut. And with that push block pushing down when I ran it through, that's gonna give me a nice uniform cut the whole way through. So the first pass is removing the bulk of the material. Second pass is coming in and cleaning it up. So it's nice and uniform. If you have any questions on this machine or any other machine in the shop, please talk to your instructor. We want to get your answers, your questions answered so that you feel comfortable using these machines and know how to use them safely.